Hi, I'm James, and today we are working on this, which is the Acer Aspire A51453 laptop, and we are going to be looking at the upgrade options for this machine. So I'm going to start by just turning it over to see the base of the laptop, and the tools that we need for this are we have a small Philips, I believe it is a size zero, yep, size zero Phillips screwdriver and our plastic pry tool. And we are going to start by going around the base and just removing the visible screws. As always, when I remove these, I just place them to the side in the same order that I have taken them out. I believe all of these screws are the same size anyway, uh, but doing that just makes things easier if there are any different size ones there. Um, this laptop I have picked up purely to do this video um, because it was very good value. Uh, picked up from Curry's as a grade A refurb. And these front screws are actually a little shorter, so the rest are all the same size. The three front ones are shorter because they're set in a little more. And with that done, we can now take our pry tool and we're going to start, I believe, just down this side. So we have the join between the base and the palm rest. So we are just going to press the front, yes, front, best place to start, so we can just run pushing inwards and generate a gap there, then doing the same along this side, take the pry tool and a bit awkward here to try and not be in the way of the cameras, but doing the same, just lifting the base And with that done, we should now be able to just lift off that base panel. With the base removed, the first thing we now want to do is just reach in and pull on the edges of this connector, and that will disconnect the battery. To then replace the battery, we are going to take our screwdriver again, and there are two screws remove on either side. This battery is a AP18C8K type battery uh, which is Acer branded and then we have this piece of tape here which we need to just pull up which secures the battery connector and then we can lift the battery out and then simply to replace slot in under these feet here, making sure that one is actually under, press the battery back down into place and replace the tape. We then just refit the two screws on either side. Now, looking first of all at the M2 SSD, we can see here we have a Western Digital SN520 256GB drive. This is a MVME type, so PCI Express type uh, M2 2280 card. And to remove it, we simply remove this screw and slot the drive out. To then refit it, we take it, slot into place, and then press down and refit the retaining screw. As so. Now, Acer also include, with the laptop but not fitted, this mounting bracket. And with this, we can fit a 2.5 inch SATA uh, SSD or hard drive if wanted. 
to do this, we simply unpack the bracket, cable and screws. And if we take a suitable SSD, so here we just have a two and a half inch SSD I have to have lying around. And what we want to do is take the cable, lift this retention strap and slot the cable into position. We can then see this has folds in the cable to line things up. So the cable goes as so. I believe that would probably be best mounted with it going under the battery, uh, but because of those folds. So we will lift the battery out. the cable underneath there is a sticky strip under that as well and then refit the battery so our drive then needs to be fitted this way in the bracket so we need to fit the four mounting screws into the sides of that It's very nice that Ace, uh, sorry, Acer do actually include the brackets in this. You do see this increasingly. Um, some manufacturers do include these two and a half inch brackets even when the machine is fitted purely with an SSD. Um, some such as HP don't. It's really nice to see it just to give the user the option in these cases uh, where you may want to add mass storage, particularly when you're getting you know, only a 256 gig SSD. Also quite nice to see a 14 inch machine with the option for a SATA drive to be added in these days as well. So with that done, we are going to just, you may find it easier to do this with the battery still out and connect everything and then refit the battery. We are going to plug in, let's just do it using this pry tool. You will definitely find this easier with the battery uh, out, to be honest. But since we have it there anyway, we can do it with it still in place. So connect the cable to the drive, fit the drive into place, make sure this wireless cable is out of the way because otherwise the drive does not really want to sit flush, that's much better, and then fit the four silver mounting screws for the mechanism. With that done, we simply need to reconnect this. And push the connector back down. To upgrade the RAM, we then, I believe the four gig of RAM that the system was originally equipped with is located on the opposite side of this dims of the board and we have the single dim slot for upgrading so while the base 4 gig cannot be removed 
we can add additional memory. Here I have a 8 gig DDR4 3200 module. Um, you may want to just add a 4 to get sort of full dual channel memory. But as that is what I have, that is what I'm going to fit for now. And so memory stick just slots in, presses down. Very standard. Uh, the final thing that we can potentially upgrade is the wireless card. Here we have a single screw. This actually comes with a Intel AX201NGW uh, network adapter anyway. So a good card at the moment, particularly if you have Wi-Fi 6 available. But if you were to want to remove this due to upgrade or fault, simply remove this screw, slot the card out, the two cables here disconnect the antenna, and then, although a bit fiddly, they simply You may want to do this with the uh, card reinserted to make things easier. If we reinsert the card, these connectors then just clip back on. And again, the pry tool can make these a bit easier to press into place. And with those on, make sure they are on firmly and you can replace your wireless card as so. The final thing then left to do is to take our battery connector and reinsert it before taking our base and starting at the back, line it up and then press down around the edges to clip the base back on. With that done, we simply go around and refit the screws to the base, remembering that the three short screws go on the front edge. Um, obviously, if you are fitting a new SSD, you will either need to clone across the contents of the old one or to do a clean install. Um, if you're fitting a hard drive into the two and a half inch bay as well, before you use that, if you're using it with the existing Windows install, you'll need to initialize and format the drive uh, through the disk management tools. Um, but overall, really nice that Acer include that two and a half inch uh, cable and bracket. Quite an easy machine to access the SSD get the back off, access the SSD, get that hard drive changed and add memory too. A little bit of a shame that the initial four gigs of RAM is soldered down, um, but overall fairly easy to upgrade. I hope you found this video useful and do let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I will include links to the parts I have used or would recommend and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as I post them and thanks for watching.